Well, it's climate change reality data, and uh, what shocked me the most is the number of climate change refugees, which are already uh, appearing all over the globe, and this uh, this number almost reached one million. And this is a trend, if it will continue, that will actually threaten not just national security, but the basics of our lifestyle in Europe especially. Well, actually, if you want to have a vision, what you want to change, uh, you have to have a very good knowledge what is the status quo, what is the present situation. So in, in terms of sustainability, I like numbers. Uh, electricity can be measured, water can be measured, how much we use water, how much waste is then generated. So the first of all, we have to have an overview and then make plans. And usually when you see how much energy or things like that you, you waste, then you also see from the business point of view that actually you lost money. So shared vision, vision should be based on the very good knowledge what is the present situation, very clear goal. It can be 10% reduction per year, it can be 20%. I mean, depends on the situation. And also to show people that by saving environment, you actually boost your business, so you save money. So this is a vision, I guess, that nobody will have nothing against. So, because it's a win-win situation. Well, events actually are different, but still, uh, what is actually missing in majority of people who go to the events, I remember even myself, that you are not aware of your carbon footprint, of your water footprint, you just act like a guest. So, uh, to raise the awareness of how much individual visits to the city uh, impact environment and also it's true for the citizens themselves so each city has a different history a different way of life it breathes differently so again raise awareness where from where impacts come usually it's waste of energy waste of water and waste generation so this is major but sometimes it also also has to do with the spatial planning so how much space does one activity use so the best would be little space, little energy, little water, and practically zero waste. So this is our vision. And uh, uh, to do that, you have to take actions which may differ from city to city. In some cities, water is the most crucial problem. In some, is energy. So then the people are to decide the priorities. Well, a sustainable event always include people who come to visit. And for instance, the first and very important question is how will I arrive to this event? Usually we fly, even the distances which are less than 500 kilometers. But I, in my view, all the destinations within 500 kilometers could be reached by train or bus. So this is the beginning of it. And of course, uh, again, how uh, will I make transportation around the place? Will I share the taxi? Will I share the car? Will I use bicycle? There are a lot of cities who already have this possibility also around the events. Um, that's about food. Uh, we all know that usually hosts want to prepare a lot of food to impress the visitors. Why? We all know what our limitations are, so be rational about the food offers. And also as a, as a consumer of food, be rational. Take as much food as you actually can eat. You know, not just with, eat with your eyes, eat with your mind. And also the event should have an organization what to do with the food that's left over. There's always poor people, there are always networks that can use that food, for instance. And then when you look overnight stay, there are standards. We know there are numbers, what is sustainable, how much electricity and water in one hotel to use per night that is sustainable and what is not. Not to mention swimming pools general temperature and things like that. So I think that the good host, the good manager of the event should have a very good idea about the numbers, not just about good intentions, and this is what is missing, and inform visitors, inform participants, and actually they can play a game, like who wins, who did actually go through the event and uh, use less energy than another, or things like that. 
to, to get it some, I don't know, not just obligation and moral and ethical thing, but to have fun, because different lifestyle can be fun as well. Well, Slovenia, of course, is a green destination because we are very lucky uh, because our geographical location makes us green. We have a lot of water precipitation which makes us green. So uh, Slovenia is green because we are sort of lucky with our uh, position. And also what is great about Slovenia is there is no overpopulation because we, have, we are small, but we are also small in inhabitants, only two million. So they are very lucky circumstances that makes us green. It's not like that we put so much effort to it, but in future things are changing. So climate is changing. Who knows whether this water will still come out of the, of the sky. So we have to be more resilient. Climate change brings extreme weather, all nasty things that can harm the greenness of our destination. So we have to be good managers and uh, maybe, again, starting with the awareness of all the people in tourist industry, but also about the visitors. Because in future, um, things are changing. It's definitely also the expectation of people. Because when you are green inside and you come to one country who, which shares its green, you can immediately see whether it's just big talking or are they doing the job?